The headlines from at this news hour. Kenyan President Uru Kenyatta pays an official visit to Ethiopia. Rapid support forces commando rejects integration of militiamen in Sudanese army. And the Ethiopian athlete Lesenbeth Gude smashed the 10,000 meter world record in Hanglo, Netherlands. Hello and welcome to our Disney Hour. I'm Daniel Kasahun with the news. President Uru Kenyatta's visit to Ethiopia is believed to bolster the bilateral ties of the two nations. The two Ethiopian and Kenyan leaders exchanged views in various areas. Kasahun Chani has more. The President of Kenya, Uhuru Kenyatta, has arrived in Addis Ababa for an official walking visit. Upon his arrival at Boli International Airport, he was welcomed by Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed and other senior government officials. President Uhuru comes with investors and high-level Kenyan politicians. The Prime Minister and the President have also planted three seedlings at Ntoto Park, one of the greenery and beautification projects of the country. Ethiopia has finalized preparations to plant 6 billion seedlings as part of the National Green Legacy Initiative. 1 billion seedlings have also been prepared for neighboring countries. And አተኛው የትግራይ ውቅራውያን ክርስቲያን የሚገኘው በገራ አልታና ተያዥ በሆኑ ተራራዎች ላይ ነው ነው የሚባለው
sculpted out of sandstone, the most wondrous of these is a Buna Yamataga. There's only one way up. You have to climb this cliff face. Welcome to the world's most perilous church. You're watching the live transmission of At This News Hour. Ethiopian ambassador to India, Tzadzi Samuel Gita says Ethiopia has shifted its focus toward its main agenda of continuing its broad and profound holistic reform process. TPLF is driving hard to return and retake power by creating a vogue and instability against the recent massive reform in Ethiopia. In an article she wrote, the ambassador says, the government of Ethiopia is taking proper measures to address humanitarian problems in the state of Tigray. Haftama Shagre has looked into the article. Take a look. In an article entitled Why Ethiopia is Under the Limelight of the Western World, the Ethiopian ambassador to India, Tzatam Ulgita, said, the world has witnessed the government of Ethiopia for its commitment toward taking bold steps to widen the political space, releasing political prisoners, and invited exiled opposition parties to return and pursue a peaceful struggle in the country. According to the ambassador, the TPLF in the 27 years of dictatorship has committed gross human rights abuses and openly looted the country's resources, thereby putting Ethiopia in a debt that it will have huge burden to the current government. Despite many challenges, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed's administration is working hard to address humanitarian crisis in the state of Tigray over the past months, she added. Tzata pointed out that the TPLF's goal was to return to power by toppling the current Ethiopian government that they have labeled as illegitimate. The government of Ethiopia has continued intensifying its efforts to address the situation in the Tigray region by rebuilding damaged infrastructures, reopening public services and rehabilitating displaced people in the region and opening unfettered access to humanitarian aid to more than 4.2 million people as well as to the international media which is now fully granted access and joint investigation on human rights violations by international human rights experts and Ethiopian counterparts in the region since the law enforcement measures have come to a successful conclusion, she remarked. The Premier has also stepped up his efforts to enter in a new era of Ethiopian governance and as well as to deepen political and economic integration with the neighboring countries. Although these positive developments have been recognized and are visible for all to see, several allegations regarding the killing of civilians, sexual violence, the looting and destruction of property have been reported by journalists and other entities and failing repeatedly to balance their stories. In January 2021, the world had witnessed a barrage of attacks and inflammatory stories on Ethiopia aimed to undermining the efforts of the Ethiopian government to preserve the sovereignty of the Ethiopian nation. She added most Western media are blindly sided with unsubstantiated claims made by the U.S. and Europe report that PLF is a victim of this war and the Eritrean and Ethiopian committed a possible war crime against the Tigran people. On May 20, said the U.S. announced visa restrictions and its security assistance to Ethiopia. The American government supplied with fabricated and exaggerated information by the TPLF clique and their propagandists are accusing Ethiopia for atrocities they have not investigated or confirmed. If the West is really interested in investigating human rights abuse, they have been given the green light to work with the government. However, what is evident is that the American government officials, their global media, and the humanitarian organization are slinging mud of lies aimed at blaming the government of Ethiopia to the task rested. The ambassador noted, despite the progress being demonstrated by the Ethiopian government, they are in utter denial of positive developments, ignoring the reality on the ground. In spite of this, Ethiopia is still open for cooperation with outside world and will continue its focus toward its main agenda of its broad and profound holistic reform process, but will never accept a foreign power to meddle its internal affairs. Eritrean Foreign Minister Rosman Saleh has blamed the United States administration that supported the Tigray People's Liberation Movement, TPLA, for the last 
two decades for the current conflict in northern Ethiopia's Tigray region, adding that blaming Eritrea for the fight was unfounded. In a letter to the United Nations Security Council circulated on Monday, Osman Saleh accused President Joe Biden's administration of stalking further conflict and destabilization through interference and intimidation in the region, apparently to rescue the remnants of the TPLF regime. The Ethiopian government considers TPLF fighters terrorists. Saleh accused the TPLF of conducting a disinformation campaign to camouflage as illicit schemes to arm itself and topple Abyss government. He urged the UN Security Council to take appropriate measures to redress the injustice. Saleh also criticized the US Department of State's recent announcement on visa restrictions for current or former Eritrean and Ethiopian government and military officials, saying it was only the latest in a string of unilateral acts of intimidation and interference. Less than two weeks ago, more than 10,000 Ethiopians also protested against the United stance on their country. The demonstration organized in the Addis Ababa by the Ethiopian authorities said Ethiopia did not need a Western intervention. This is a this news hour. Planting wild bamboo is said to be vital for the sustainable use of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, helping protect the dam from unnecessary sedimentation. Actors in the field reaffirm their commitment to playing share in realizing the sustainable development of the Abai Basin catchment areas. more. Afforestation takes the leading role in realizing the sustainable use of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam project. Scholars thus suggest the need to plant bamboo trees as part of this initiative. The campaign to plant over 1 million bamboo trees in the Abai Basin catchment areas has officially been launched in the presence of high-ranking government officials and scholars from different universities. Salale University, Kadabra Marcos University, Ifedri Akababi na Dannemurumur Institute Gaba Mohon, Salale and Deborah Marcos universities, in collaboration with Federal Environment and Forest Research Institute, conducted a significant research about the importance of bamboo trees for lowland areas. We are thus planting bamboo trees with the intention of harnessing the resource. If we can cover up our degraded areas with bamboo trees like other countries do, we will meet our demand for the tree. Participants of the workshop organized by Selali University expressed the need to make use of domestic knowledge to address African challenges. What Ethiopia currently requires is a knowledge-based and tangible policy that helps galvanize its economy. Actors in the field reaffirmed commitment to play share in realizing the sustainable development of the Abai Basin catchment areas. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance uh, Dam's Girdus Awareness and Fundraising Campaign was virtually launched by UK and Ireland-based uh, Ethiopian civic organizations in collaboration with the Ethiopian Embassy in London. In his opening remarks, Ambassador Tafari Malese Desta noted that the dam is being built by the efforts and resources of Ethiopians at home and abroad from all walks of life. As the campaign is aligned with the upcoming second filling of the GERD, the ambassador called upon members of the diaspora community to continue their support for the completion of the dam. In business, Abram Bank, in collaboration with uh, Santim Play Engineering, has launched a mobile POS uh, and POS uh, payment platform that enables the community to easily access their money wherever they are. Kasanchani reports. 
Brown Bank, in collaboration with Santin Pay and Genuary, has launched a mobile post and post payment platform just in Addis Ababa to modernize the banking sector across the country. To win the occasion, Brown Bank President Abraham Alaro and Santin Pay and Genuary Board of Directors Professor Daniel Gadao have signed a memorandum of understanding to work together with the M Post machine. According to the Chief Information Officer, Abraham Bank was an alumnium. The AIMPOS technology helps to undertake various efforts to modernize the banking sector through multiple payments like air ticket, regular customer handling, and a tax with the revenue ministry, and so on. Brown Bank has embarked on a number of uh, digitization projects. Uh, previously, we have launched our flagship product, uh, Brown School Pay, which facilitates a uh, school fee collection system for universities, uh, schools, all kinds of uh, schools and today uh, we are launching the first uh, uh, mobile POS uh, product. Uh, as you know, POS have been with us for long, but uh, these have been traditional POS. Uh, these are M POS. Uh, uh, th they are very portable, very small in size. Uh, you don't need a specialized device, you just use your mobile. You download the software and uh, using uh, the necessary security uh, embedded in the system, you can use uh, your mobile phone uh, as a uh, point of sale device. So MPOS in short is a mobile POS device. So uh, it has the advantage of portability. We can use it in uh, different scenarios. You know, as much as possible, we have to make our transactions frictionless. So uh, carrying cash is not safe, even from health point of view. It's not secure. You know. There are robbers everywhere. So uh, I advise all, uh, all, all customers to use cards as a means of payment, as it is uh, secure and uh, healthy. Meanwhile, Professor Daniel Qatar stated that the m machine had so far checked air quality issues in related to security and called upon to general community to use this technology with great confidence. Santimpe is uh, a local and indigenous organization uh, organized by youngsters um, uh, who are really capable of doing things that uh, we used to import. And uh, this Santin Pay Engineering is uh, developing basic products of MPOS, mobile POS machines. And uh, the developed products are originally starting from the structures, the, the, the architecture uh, owned by the Santin Pay. And it has been tested by international organizations and uh, we have certificates, a number of certificates, and uh, nationally, INSA has certified us of the security. So there's no question of security breaching uh, using Santin Pay. With DM post technology, it was possible to undertake paying up to 150,000 per it was learned.
Welcome back. You are watching a Disney Hour. Moving to the news from across the continent. Mohammed Hamdan Dagalo Hamidze, commander of the Rapid Support Force, RSF, has rejected publicly the integration of his forces into the Sudanese army, challenging plans to merge the various armies under a unified command during the transitional period. Hamidze, who is accused of war crimes and atrocities, was applauded in April 2019 by pro-democracy protesters when he had disobeyed al-Bashir and backed their calls for freedom, peace, and democracy. Speaking at a memorial service for a commander of the Sudan Liberation Movement, uh, Minawi SLMMM in Khartoum on Friday, the RSF leader, however, complained of political intrigues against him, recalling that the regime change in Sudan has become a reality thanks to his support for the Sudanese people. He said he had voiced his support to the uprising at the, at the time where all the others were preparing the attack on the pro-democracy state in, in accordance with the instructions given by Omar al-Bashir. On Saturday, the Sudan Tribune got a, vi a video including the second part of his remarks before... Uh, the Sudan Liberation Movement uh, Minawi supporters where he openly rejects the merger of his RSF into the reformed Sudan Armed Forces. Egyptian authorities jailed the former ambassador last month allegedly in connection to his criticism of the government's handling of the great Ethiopian Renaissance Dam crisis, according to the Middle East Monitor. According to the families of uh, Yahya, Najim, Yahya Najim, who served as Cairo's ambassador to Venezuela, he was arrested following a raid by security forces at his home and subsequently disappearing for three days. The New Arab reported, citing close sources, to Najim that the state's security persecution charged him with joining a terrorist group, spreading false news and misusing social media, and that he was sentenced to 15 days imprisonment pending investigation. His family also claims that after the investigation, he was transferred to an unknown location in flagrant violation of Egyptian law. Despite having served his country as a diplomat for years, Najim's family believes his uh, incarceration was the price he paid for his freedom to defend the soul of his homeland. President of the Russian Federation, Vladimir Putin, compared the current trajectory of international relations strategy adopted by the United States government to the one that led to the dissolution of the USSR while speaking at P21. Putin said the United States was wrong to think itself powerful enough to get away with threatening other countries, a mistake, he said, that led to the downfall of the former Soviet Union. The remarks come just days before Putin's meeting with United States President Joe Biden, whose cabinet imposed a broad array of sanctions on Russia in April, including curbs to a sovereign debt market. Вы знаете, в чем э, проблема? Я вам это скажу, как э, бывший гражданин бывшего Советского Союза. В чем проблема империи? Им кажется, что они такие могущественные, что они могут позволить себе небольшие погрешности и ошибки. Ничего, этих купим, этих напугаем, с этими договоримся, этим дадим бусы, этим погрозим э, военными э, кораблями. И мы решим проблему. Но количество проблем нарастает. И наступает момент, когда с ними уже не справятся. И Соединенные Штаты уверенной поступью, уверенной походкой, твердым шагом идут прямо по пути Советского Союза.